Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no, you don't like it Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Rewriters Room. We are the men with the pen. I am one third of our illustrious trio with the foresight. Armand Sather, the John Cena of journalism, the Brock Lesnar of broadcasting, the Roman Reigns of rhetoric, and the Paul Heyman of podcasting. I'm not here alone. I'm here with my fellow bombshells who have entered into the villa. Cece, how you doing, my brother? It's lit. Much love to you. Uh What's good? It's CC, the best rapper and producer in the whole wide world. God body because I consume healthy products and do towel curls. Benevolent servant to the earth and philanthropist. And every phrase I say is a gem like amethyst. You could put any nigga next to me. And women going to be like, who the fuck, man, is this? I may talk a lot, but I only got one thing to say. Love yourself and keep going. You out of the world, so give all you can. Take care of your body, your people, and your land. Wait, where's Jay? Hey, 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 it's here. Um, And as I always say, is a grandpa Chan. Um, I I would like to come again today with some more accountability on my part. Um, uh, if you've been a listener, you know I was not an early believer in Solo Sokoa. I, I, as everyone knows, I do not like wrestlers who don't wrestle with shoes. I don't get it. Same as you, I have not read. <laughs> I just, I, every time I see it, I'm like, this is so stupid. Put some shoes on. You're, you're, come on. Because then they get stepped on. It's like, yeah, no shit, bro. You're not wearing shoes. Um, and so I didn't really see it, and I was worried. I was like, okay, like, what does he do post-Roman? And he's obviously not post-Roman. I mean, you're this is you're hearing this right before SummerSlam. We all know what the talk town is. Uh, but I will say he has done much better job on the mic than I thought he would. His character has really grown a lot. I like his little suits, his little finger gloves. The shadow boxing is funny. Like, I do see a world where in which he, like, wants – the bloodline, you know, has a pause moment or whatever that is, you know, um, where he is involved in some more mid card action. I do think he could stay afloat now. And I didn't think that probably like if you asked me that like a year ago, I probably wouldn't have said that. I've been like, he's I don't know, he's have to be lackey forever. But you could really see where it's like, OK, I see where this could go. And maybe he'll keep some of the Tonga was with him or something. But I definitely see now where it's like, yeah, I can see an IC title right for Solo Sokoa. That's believable to me at this point. Like, that would make sense. That'd be a fun, you know, two months of SmackDown. So shout out to him, bro. Shout out to Girl. Yeah, no, salute, salute. Um, I've definitely enjoyed his character work as well. Uh, this match with Cody will be a very big test of, True. yeah, whether, whether he can be a main event player or if he got to bring his ass to Midcar Mafia. <laughs> so we shall see. But, of course, we want to thank all of you listeners for tapping into our uh, new season of the Rewriters Room, our bloodline theme season, all bloodline, all season, taking you through the entire four-year story and all of the important chapters. Last week, we introduced Jay Uso um, and the entire feud between Roman Reigns and Jay Uso that ended up with Jay Uso becoming the right-hand man. And this week, we will get into the next significant chapter of the story, which will kind of forecast something that comes a bit later on as well. But before we get there, of course, you know, we got to get into some trivia. The boy is still undefeated. Uh, Chan will be leading this week, so I'll be taking on CC, who had a, um, in, a an interesting showing in our A Show TikTok and Reels that we've been doing. Uh, the, the, the question was titles. World titles that have changed hands at SummerSlam and when it happened. And uh, CC did, didn't exactly hold it down for, for Cornell gang. So maybe he'll, he'll redeem himself against me in, in this trivia thing. But but if you know how it goes, you know, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that I'm coming out on top. I'm, I don't remember Steiner math exactly, so I'm not going to do it right now. But just know I, I have a 126% chance of winning this. So let's let's run it up. Uh, two things. When that question hits you, it catches you off guard. Like, so have some patience. Like, it really stuns you. You have no idea. And at what point, you say you keep winning, does do we invoke the shriek? Like, at what point do you hit Undertaker levels of, like, the shriek? And then if the shriek is broken, like, you know. I, I mean, well, we would have to go back and look at Because I think we introduced, we might have introduced trivia, what, like, 
we did it a couple of times, like season one, season two. Yeah, I think we, we right. started doing it consistently, like season three. Um, so we, we would have to just look at the amount of episodes that we've done and how many I actually competed in. But I mean, if if if, if we want to do that, if we want to you know go back and crunch the numbers, I'm more than willing to say that you know the, the streak is here, the streak is alive, and the, <laughs> CC, this is your chance to come see me at at, at Trivia Mania. So let's do it. All right. So, um, as you guys know, this theme of this season is the bloodline. So I thought what would be an interesting trivia topic is just the Anawai'i family in general. Oh, um, so I have some questions about oh, the <laughs> Anawai'i family throughout the it years. They're go. all they're mostly wrestling related, so they're not too crazy. But you know, there's a lot of them. <laughs> you haven't noticed. Yes. Um, all right. So just to give you an idea where we're at, first question. In what year, so just a year, um, did Three Minute Warning debut? 1997? Nope. 1996? 2000? Nope. Nope. 1999? Nope. 98? Nope. 2001? Nope. 2002? CC said it first, 2002. All right. Eric Bischoff. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember they weren't, when he said the the 90s, I was like, I feel like that's a little early. Nah, yeah, when you said 97, bro, nah, dude. And right. they were only around for a year or two. Interesting yeah, because I'm about to, I'm close to to that era. I'm thank God it gets more crash, a little bit more crash TV, which I appreciate. Yeah, bro. When Raw hits Spike, they let you know about it. Um, <laughs> second question. This is a much more kind of common one. They talk about this one on TV a lot. Um, what are the names of the two wild Samoans? Uh, oh, Sika uh, and Sika. Oh, I got that one. Damn it! All right, so we we are tied up. All right. Question number three. The Samoan SWAT team went by what name during their run in the WWF, now WWE? Samoan SWAT team? Yes. They went by a different name while it's with WWE. And Um. bonus points. A different name when with extreme championship wrestling. I don't even know who the fuck that is. Yeah, I, all right. I can this might some, be my first time hearing this shit. <laughs> Samoan SWAT team. I can give you some uh some some multiple choice for this one. All right. So they were either known as A, the head shrinkers, B, the Samoan Gangster Party, C, Gangsters in Paradise. Mm-hmm. Or D, the savages. The savages. Nope. Oh, is it Gangsters in Paradise? Not in WWE, it wasn't. Oh, B. It's definitely B then. It was Gangsters something, wasn't it? God damn it. Hey, head, 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 head Triggers. The head, head Triggers. Head Triggers? Yes, in ECW, they were known as the uh, Small and Gangster Squad. That's ECW. Oh, okay. So, like, the, the Head Stringers, is that... Now, I have a question about that. Is that because... They're like so they have such big hands they can take a man's head between their hands and squish it. Or is this like a racial thing where it's like, yeah, oh, you guys I, gonna use voodoo? Yeah, I would lean. I wasn't there, obviously, but if I was guessing based off what I saw, it was definitely the voodoo pygmy heads were going to shrink her. See, head. that's why that's yeah. why I didn't get it wrong. Because yeah. once again, I underestimated how racist Vince was. Like, I I need to stop that. I need to pull oh. that out of my mind. <laughs> You're going through I was looking at some of this stuff and it's like. Even like the uh what's what's Russ Bro's name? Not Yakuza. Um Yokozuna. Oh Yokozuna. Yokozuma. Bro was not Japanese. Like they just made that up. Like they just like, they just like <laughs> made that up. Pretty insane. <laughs> like, bro, like yeah, not, it was not as bad as having uh A Train be t- Tensai, but that well, it might be worse actually. People nah, it's both pretty nah, bad. Both pretty bad. But I would say the A Tray thing, just because of like what year it was later, current more closer to current time, yeah. that's unacceptable. But it's just like what was going on in that meeting? Y'all have to ask yourself. All right. Question four. How many combined tag team reigns has Jay Uso had? Eight. No. Nine. Nine. 
That's nice. Motherfucker. <laughs> Eight with his brother Jimmy. Yeah, I knew it was less has, than ten. He has, yeah. he, he has he has one more than Jimmy because the Cody one. Yeah. Son yeah, of yeah. a bitch. All right. So Armand has one, but I'll throw out this last one because it's a fun one. Um, who is the first member of the Anawai family to serve as a full-time general manager on a WWE television product? I knew this would make you overthink it. I knew it. You're Is overthinking. it Rikishi? You're overthinking it, big dog. Oh, um, I knew this would be. I'm you. overthinking it. Yes. <laughs> First member of the Anawai. I don't family. know Alpha Seeker. You, you, you said to serve as a general manager, full time GM. That is their sole job. That's all they do. Oh. All they've ever done. Oh, Ava. There you go. <laughs> You're overthinking it. It's Ava. That's a, that's, that's, that's a good question. That's a really yeah. Ava. Shout out to Ava. Shout out to Ava. Ava that's what I'm saying. When you really get into it, bro, you're like, oh, yeah, Ava is in there. And fucking I, bro. It's mad of them, bro. Like, they, it's so many of them. Yeah. Uh, but alas, our mom was victorious. Motherfucker. Um, so I hope you guys learned a little bit about, about the bloodline, about the Anawai family. Tell your friends. This was this was probably the, the the toughest one for me yet, but you know, still we rise. This is like I think my streak is getting to like when when Undertaker had those Triple H and Shawn Michaels matches, which were all good, but it was like you could tell he was losing his step. It was getting a little yeah. harder for him. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm 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 getting to that point. So um, you're about to stop doing old school, is what you're saying? Yeah, and, and no more <laughs> dives out of the ring, like. You about to get the snake eyes and and then you get a big boot. I'm not doing no flying clothesline. None no. of that. None, none of that. But that's our trivia. So we're going to jump into our rewrite. This, this week, we will be tackling the time period after Hell in a Cell, where Jay Uso is firmly the right-hand man with Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns is heading into some brand warfare. Now, initially... He was scheduled to go up against Randy Orton, which was a match that people were like, okay, th that'll be cool. We've seen it before, but I don't think people were as hyped for it because they wanted to see the guy on the other side who had carried the company for several months during the pandemic, Drew McIntyre, get that title back and face off against Roman. As you know, Drew McIntyre came over to SmackDown, cut a promo, a great promo segment with Roman. Jey Uso stepped up to him. Drew McIntyre beat him in a match. That following Monday, Drew McIntyre won his WWE Championship back from Randy Orton. They had that epic contract signing segment. Like that was that was one another one of those moments where it was like Roman Reigns is is the tribal chief. Like he is he is Roman B Reigns. He is Roman. He's he he's just like he's he's that guy. Like calls Drew a secondary title holder. He's the he's the stand in. He's the one who, you know, steps in and does the match when Roman's busy or he's not interested. He'll always be my favorite number two. That's like some it, cold shit to say to somebody. It was it, it, it was brilliant. And it, it truly um, showed what they could do in that Thunderdome era. Like because the you got to remember, the whole segment was without mics. Like none of them had mics. They, they were legit just talking to each other. And Roman's giving him that like condescending whisper, but it's still loud enough for us to hear it. Like it was just, it was crazy. We traveled to Survivor Series 2020. Jay Uso was also on the SmackDown, uh, Team SmackDown against Team Raw, the five on five traditional Survivor Series elimination tag team match. Let's just say that five times fast. Um, and Team SmackDown got their asses whooped. Uh, Seth Rollins sacrificed himself. Everyone else got taken out. Jay Uso tries to take on Team Raw by himself, spam super kicks. And ends up losing, um, and then Ro Roman sends him away. Says you lost. You just you, dis you disgrace the family. Leave. Roman takes on Drew McIntyre. Phenomenal match. Like e easily one of the best matches of that pandemic Thunderdome era. And then Jey Uso comes out. Obviously gets involved. Um, cheats to help Roman win. And then the following week, Roman reprimands Jay for interfering and asks if he's a bitch who's asking for Thanksgiving leftovers. Um, and yeah, so we're going to be rewriting that period of time. Um, it was an interesting rewrite for me. I'll let you guys go first, and then I'll kind of get into the things that I would change there. So I th I'm going I'm to start off because mine is probably like the least deviating from the original. I, I, I deviated less from the actions 
and um, did more deviation when it came to uh, sort of like what's like at play under, you know, under current currents. So like, um, so let's, uh, let's start, you know, post Hell in a Cell or whatever. Um, Jey Uso beats Daniel Bryan. Um, he, he beats him up, you know, all that stuff or whatever joins Roman. So next week backstage, Daniel Bryan's like, you know what? I still believe what, what I said about Jay, you know, performing and Roman not being able to beat him or whatever. And he takes like a little pause there. And soon enough, Jay will realize it too. But he better not run into me or I better not run into him anytime soon because I still haven't forgiven him for that beatdown. Um, then he goes away. Um, KO uh, does the thing where he mocks Jay about the coffee or whatever. Kayla also mocks Jay or whatever. Um, and at this point, you know, after being, you know, mocked twice, and I think this is like the same night or whatever, Jay is like boiling with anger um, as he's like talking to Paul or whatever. And Paul like has a concern looks on look on his face as they like head to Roman's place or whatever. Because at this point, Paul's like, hey, he didn't say you should do this interview. Um, and then Roman tells Jay, you know, not to do the interviews, blah, blah, blah. But Jay is like ready to run through a wall as he walks away. Like when he says like take care of KO, like Jay's like too, almost too amped or whatever. Um, and then Roman asks him, he's like, you know, he's like, uh, why don't you know uh, to like take like why doesn't why doesn't why didn't Roman know about this beforehand or whatever? And then you know they go through the whole thing. But then he tells Paul before Paul leaves, you know, before he goes to make sure that the match is good, he says, listen, one more thing, my family, as you know has the blood of the warrior. When one of us decides to go on a rampage, it's like we can't be stopped. Jay's family, keep an eye on them, all right? And then Heyman says, yes, my tribal chief, I understand. And then uh, Jay, you know, beats KO in their match, um, except for this time, rather than just kind of like leaving with Roman, he like proceeds to whoop his ass. Like this is worse than like Daniel Bryan and shit or whatever. And Heyman's like screaming for him to get off, but it like, it doesn't go too far. It doesn't last too long because Heyman's like, no, 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 blah, 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 whatever. And then like Jay kind of like snaps out of it. Um, so then they do their pose at the end of the show. Jay looks super duper fired up, super confident or whatever. But Paul and Roman are looking at each other like they might have second thoughts about letting this nigga in or whatever. So then the next week, Drew cuts his promo or whatever. Roman and, and Drew are staring at each other. And then uh, Jay like comes from behind Roman, moves him and super kicks Drew. And then Drew like stumbles back leans on the ropes and then comes back and goes for the claymore on roman but roman ducks out of the way and like out of the ring or whatever and then he's like yelling for jay to come with him because at this point jay's kind of like on the side of uh drew and he's about to go attack him but he's like no, no no come with me come with me or whatever um so then roman's like lecturing him on the way up the ramp or whatever um they get backstage or whatever and you know roman yelled at him again but this time what he's he's doing is he's, you know, saying like, why would you do that? I didn't give you, you know, uh, I didn't give you the the go ahead to do that. But the way that he gets Jay fired up to go and like make sure that he does the right thing is like he's manipulating Jay into being mad at Roman for how he got yelled at because of Drew rather than it being like Roman's really mean to me or whatever. Right. So then like the same match happens or whatever. Um but um, when uh, Roman tells him, like, the make him understand thing, instead of just, like, uh, beating him up, uh, Jay actually goes and grabs a chair. And then after he comes to the ring with the chair, Drew Claymore's into the face, wins, stares at Roman, same way it happens before. But this time, Roman's pissed. And when Drew comes out the ring, he walks up to him and he says, I'm your biggest problem, but I don't think I'm your only problem. And then they both look at Jay in the ring and then Drew walks off or whatever. And Roman looks like he wants to hit him with the title. He's like looking at the title and looking at Drew. Drew's walking up the ramp. And then like Roman's kind of like following him or whatever. And then Drew kind of gets a sense that he's being followed. He turns around and then Roman just like stops and puts the title up or whatever. Because Roman is so prideful. He doesn't want to be seen as like sneaking up and getting caught. So he just pretends like he was just trying to like grandstand in front of him the whole time. But like it just showing you how like kind of thrown off the whole Jay situation is is like kind of making him because he's like, wait a second, this is I got this guy, but this guy's on my team and he's kind of going crazy right now or whatever. But I still need to like save face and look confident or whatever. So then, um, you know, Sam and uh, Daniel Bryan has like their whole they have their whole thing or whatever. Um, and then Daniel Bryan's like, listen, you know, I'm going to get my payback. But for me, payback is not personal or whatever. And he tells Jay, be careful what he does tonight. 
um, in case Roman doesn't improve or whatever. And then he smiles and he puts his COVID mask back on and he just keeps going. Um, so Brian like ends up winning and then he celebrates or whatever. Uh, Jay goes to attack him and then Paul comes out to the ramp. And then like, he's like, listen, like I just, it's the same thing as last week. I told you not like, no, no, the tribal chief didn't say to do this. And, you know, Jay's like, you know, coming up the ramp, but he's like mad. You can tell he really doesn't want to go this time. So um, we get to to, uh, to Survivor Series, right? In this version of Survivor Series, I have like shenanigans going crazy for the SmackDown team the same way, almost the same way that they had uh, they had for um, the original, except for like Seth, the, Seth doesn't actually sacrifice himself until he pins someone or whatever. So like, I forget who was on the other team, but he's going to take one of them out. Then he sacrifices himself. And then we get into a bunch of shenanigans, but Jay ends up winning by like some random shit happening or whatever. Um, and he doesn't get that like go away thing. He's actually like super duper hyped, hy uh, hyped up. He's super uh, 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 pumped or whatever. And he's like celebrating with Roman. Roman's like trying to like calm him down or whatever. Um, and then Roman has his match. Jay still interferes, but, um, and uh, they Roman still wins. But on the following SmackDown, Roman still like does the, the reprimand that he does. But this one is like, it's not the same reprimand that we saw. Instead, this time, uh, Roman rolls the clip from Jay winning at uh, Survivor Series. And then he asked Jay, like, you know, how did how did you feel? I, you know, I remember in the moment you were pretty pumped. And, like, you could see Jay being like, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. I can't lie. It was blah, 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 oops. It was blah, blah, oops. And then, um, and then uh, Roman, uh, and then Jay says, um, you know, it always feels good to get a W for the tribal chief. And then Roman looks at him with a questioning look. And he said, a W for the tribal chief? Is that what this was? And then he rolls the interference clip. And Roman says how the tribal chief doesn't need anyone to get a W for him. You know, for weeks, Jay's been making decisions as if he knows what's best. If that was the case, wouldn't you be the tribal chief? But you're not or whatever. He's like, yeah, you want Survivor Series, but I got a title and you don't. All you have to show for it is temper tantrums or whatever. And he was like, our family demands respect. And you don't demand respect by acting like an animal. You walk in like a man and demand that respect for, with honor. So like what I'm doing, and um, Jay seems to be like, more locked in and like a little bit more remorseful, more remorseful. And it ends with um, them kind of like, you know, ending their whole spiel. But Roman and Paul are like smiling to each other behind Jay's back or whatever, as if they have the situation a little bit more like under control. And the whole, my whole like rewrite thing with this is like, if you guys remember for the first one, I was talking about Mad Emperor Roman and how he's paranoid about different problems that might come up. And in this case, the first person who's the subject of him being preemptive about taking care of his paranoia is Jay. And he does it, you know, and I talked about it earlier about how he's going to go on a rampage and attack people beforehand, but he realizes I just brought this guy in. You can't just attack him after you just attacked him for what is it like two months or whatever. It was like two PLEs in a row. I had y'all fight already. He can't do that again. So this is like him showcasing like, Hey, no, I'm going to manipulate you to not be my problem with words or whatever. And not only that, I'm going to keep that anger that you have in you, keep it going, but I'm just going to turn it on other people. <laughs> he just wants to keep it off of him or whatever. He's like hyping up the beast, but he's just turning it away from him. So, so yeah, that's my rewrite. Nice. Part of that inspired, part of that inspired me. Um, so I guess I can go next. So mine is partially influenced by Drew's current run. Um, because honestly, I think this is probably my favorite Drew. Um, close second is him and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, but I do like Drew off till. I think he's a, he's com he's compelling off till. Um, so uh my rewrite. Uh, Drew loses his title at Hell in a Cell uh, to Randy Orton the same way. Um, and so at the next Raw, he's just kind of like desperate. He's just like talking to Adam. He's like, man, like, what can I do to get a match? Like, I need a match. And I was like, no, no rematch. That was it. It was Hell in a Cell. Like, you're done. Um, he's just like off kilter. He's like beating people up, fucking up catering. Like, he's just kind of pissed. Randomly, we see Paul Heyman just kind of walking backstage you know, near Adam Pierce's office. And he's like, uh, Drew McIntyre, what's going on? Like, what do you, what's up? He's like, I can't get a match. Like, I need Randy Orton. Like, it's not right. Like, I need to get my title back. Like, I'm carrying this company. Da, 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 da. Um, And then, so Paul's like, why don't you just go out there and, you know, take a match? He's like, nah, like, I want an actual legit match. I don't want to sneak up on anybody. 
And, and Paul's like, okay, I can get you a map, but you'll just owe me a favor. Sometime in the future, I'm going to come ask him, and you'll just have to do me a favor. And Drew at first is like, I'll think about it. But then kind of throughout the show, they show him kind of in the back, going back and forth. And by the end of the show, he goes to Paul, and he's like, uh, he goes in to see Paul, and the kind of presumption is that he said, yeah. Um, on SmackDown, Drew is telling Roman, he's like, Survivor Series is coming up. Randy Orton is a big champion, big threat. You know, we got to, like, make sure you're locked in. We just added Drew as the right hand. He's kind of a wild card. I don't really know if he should be around. You know, Roman's like, ah, uh, I guess, like, you know, it is kind of in the air. But, yeah, okay, let's let him stay home. But he's going to be in the five-for-five five match, so he may still, you know, be on the show. Um, it's announced that on the next Raw, there will be a no-DQ match with Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. Um, Drew wins the match. He is now WWE champion. On SmackDown, Jimmy is having his match against Otis. So in this timeline, instead of Otis just being named, he faces Jimmy Uso, who is not hurt in this timeline. Um, and Jimmy is about to win the match in a masked figure. Knocks him out, hits him with a chair. Otis wins the match. He's a fifth member of Team SmackDown. Um, Jay comes down to the thing, and the mass figure runs off. And he's but he's like pissed. You could tell he's hot. Um, then at the contract signing, there's an event. Like there's it goes basically the same, but at one point Rowan presses. Drew, he's like, do you know what was going on? Who attacked Jimmy? Like, do you know who that is? And the whole SmackDown, he's been like trying to figure out like who attacked Jimmy? Like, who would who got beef with us? Was it like Mike Corbin saying he's like bringing people in to counsel him? Paul's like interviewing people. It's like a whole production. And and Jay at this point is like pissed, and he because he's like, no, nah, this isn't right. Like they're attacking the bloodline, they're attacking us, they're attacking my brother. And Paul is like to his face, he's like, yeah, 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 I agree. But to Roman, he's like, you see, like he's off kill like he's not going to be able to be helpful at survivor series you need to keep him home um okay and then we get to um survivor series the five on five match goes is about to go on jay jimmy's in the background like kind of hurt but he's like there to support his brother he's like nah bro i'm gonna watch from back here you got this is your time to shine go do your thing and roman's like yeah go win and that's the only option. Go out there and fucking win. Roman leaves. Jimmy's backstage. Uh, match goes the same way with Jay losing. He gets backstage. Jimmy is worshipped. Like, got his ass whooped against. And Jay, at this point, is, like, off his rocker. And he's, like, trying to figure out. He goes to Paul. He's like, somebody somebody beat up, uh, you know, Jimmy. This ain't right. Duh, 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 duh. Like, I got to figure out what this is. He said, and you know who I think it was? I think it was Drew. And Paul's like, no, nah, why would Drew do that? He's not like that type of guy. Like, it was probably Baron Corbin or, you know, Seth Rollins or somebody like that. It could be somebody from the New Day. We don't know. And Jay is just, like, convinced it's Drew. He's like, no, no, way. it's definitely Drew. And so Roman's having his match with Drew. It's going about the same. This time, Jimmy comes out, and he's irate. He's like, you know what happened to my brother, and you're going to tell me. And Roman's like, go back, go back. And he's like, no. And then Paul gets up and, like, kind of gets between um, Drew and Jimmy. And at first, he's moving him. And then at first, Jay pushes him out the way, loads up a super kick. Paul moves back in the way to stop it. Clean super kick. Paul's knocked out. But that distraction gives Roman enough time to lock in the guillotine, makes Drew pass out. Except now at the end of this match, Paul's kind of, like, in the corner, like, hurt. And, like, Roman's, like, kind of over him, like, pissed looking at Jay. And Paul's like, see, like, I told you, like, he's too hot to handle. Like, I know he's your right hand, my tribal chief, but, like, you need to listen to me. You shouldn't take counsel from him anymore. We can't trust Jay. Like, he's out. And so then the next SmackDown, you see Paul Heyman in the background before they go out for another Roman promo. He's on the phone. He's like, we're good. Your debt is paid. We're even, Steven. And you see him kind of, like, turn to the camera with the phone putting away. Is Drew McIntyre's ID. Um, and so basically where we're at right now is that 
Paul has a, basically locked himself in not only to be Roman's wise man, but he's also now got Roman looking at Jay, Jay sideways. Because he's like, you almost cost me this match. You attacked Paul. Like, I can't trust you. And so with the next kind of bout, now we're about to see Roman kind of really lean into, like, the I, like, can't trust anybody. I have to take everybody out. And so this is kind of like the mid act in the movie where we now see like this is the turn. This is where Roman is like, you see, I couldn't even trust you to stay home. I actually do one thing. You couldn't even stay back. And he's like, no, 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 no. And so now it's like Roman, he beats up Jay, he punishes him, hits him with the title. And then he's like, from now on, it's what I say goes. Anyone who doesn't follow my way is out. And when I say out, I mean out of WWE, out of wrestling. You'll never be heard from again. And so now he has complete supplication from Jay and Jimmy because Jay now thinks he messed up. And in his mind, he's like, oh, I almost cost him the title. Like, I messed up. And Jimmy's like, I got my ass beat like two straight weeks. I got nothing else. Um, And so now we're going to see Roman kind of make that turn where he's like, you know what? I want the Usos to have the tag belts. I want this. I want that. Um, So that's where we're set up now in our arc. I love that. I love that. It reminds me of um, this is a nerd ass thing to say or whatever, but the two towers, Lord of the Rings, that slimy yeah. ass motherfucker who was with the kid, like he was convincing yeah, him. Exactly. To, exactly. I love yeah. It. Yeah. I, I really like, and I, but I kind of like what you said, where it's like, I like the idea that like Roman has the bloodline, but he doesn't really trust them at all. Like they're just around, like, and he just has to have numbers but he doesn't actually like believe in the family stuff. Cause I feel like that was a big part of his first run, but like, and since then, I think it's going to be different with the baby face stuff. But I, I really like that original dynamic of like, we're family, but there's a clear hierarchy. Mm. I like it. I like it. Um, my rewrite is purely based on bias, purely 1000% bias. So I'm gonna keep everything the same, literally everything. The, the promo before Drew wins the WWE title back. Drew winning the WWE title back, of course. The great contract signing segment where Roman sh- walks Drew down, makes him secondary champion, makes him actually believe that he might be inferior. Survivor Series, same thing. Jay is the last man for Team SmackDown, loses. Roman sends him away. Tells him, like, you lost, you disgraced the family, you're done. Survivor Series 2020 main event. Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Phenomenal match. Everything happens the same. Jay, of course, does not follow the orders. He comes out, gets involved into the match, uh, super kicks Drew. Uh, Roman hits a Superman punch and a spear. Roman goes to pin Drew. The ref, you know, because the ref was taken out, so the ref climbs back in. One, two, Drew kicks out. Jay is still there. Jay jumps up on the rope trying to distract Drew. Uh, But Roman actually reacts in the match because if you remember, Roman was like, Roman told him to leave. But when Jay came out and helped, like Roman let him help him. He didn't send him away. Roman took the help. So for him to react the next week and be like, well, well, why were you there? I didn't need you. It's like you posed with the nigga with the title after you won the match. So in my rewrite, Roman actually reacts to Drew help, to Jay uh, helping him. He's like, no, like, you're not supposed to be here. Get out. Like, walks up to Jay, is yelling at him, like, kind of reminiscent of um, Night of Champions 2023, when he's like, you th- like, we're not the ones anymore. You're gone. So, like, it's, it's a lot of foreshadowing in, in mine. Like, mine has, like, long-term implications, a lot of long-term, to- long-term storytelling, full circle shit. So he's sending him away. Jay like looks sad, looks de- dejected, drops from the rope, walks up, walks up the ramp. Roman is telling him like, I'll see you when I get to the back. Like there's going to be consequences for this. Roman turns around, Claymore kick. Drew pins him. Drew gets the victory. And it's okay for Roman to lose here because it's a champion versus champion match. Titles aren't on the line. This is purely uh, brand warfare. And um, yeah, and I think Drew getting the win here in a match that's not for the title makes the inevitable clash at the castle match instead of them saying drew mcintyre has never beaten roman reigns in singles competition he's never beaten roman reigns for a title so so drew is even more confident going into clash at the castle like bro i've i've pinned you before it's just now the title is on the line and so roman losing at survivor series he's pissed because the entire bloodline lost that night jay lost the five on five roman lost to the, the secondary title holder. So that next SmackDown, Roman is like, not only did you disgrace the family and lose your match, 
you didn't obey my orders, you got involved in my match, and you made me lose to, to the best number two in this company. There's going to be severe consequences for this. You, you have a match tonight. I'm going to be there. You better win. So th 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 this makes Roman have this like crazy re reign of terror, but it also makes Jay like really get his shit together. Like if I'm going to get involved in the match, I need to make sure I need to ensure that Roman Reigns is going to win. And this plays a big part going into what our next chapter is going to be the Kevin Owens story, because Jay Uso was so instrumental in Roman Reigns winning all those matches, the last man standing match, the TLC match, the um, the cage match, like Jay Uso got involved in all of them and was a big reason why Roman Reigns won. So the, the, the bloodline kind of has this humbling, like, like Ro Jay is finally the right hand man. Roman feels like, you know, he's untouchable, like he's the man, but then he's got this insurance policy in Jay Uso to help him win, win these matches. But then he loses to Drew McIntyre because of Jay Uso. So he has to really tear into, like, tear into him and be like, yo, like moving forward, I, I can't lose any more matches. Like I, I put the food on the table. The tribal chief doesn't lose. And, and if you're going to be my right hand man, you can't lose. And you, you need to help make sure that I don't lose either. And, 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 but but it's also confusing for Jay because it's like you want me to ooh, ooh, so you want me to make sure that that you don't lose, but then you're telling me not to come out and help you. Like it's it, it's really confusing, and it plays more into the the, the, the manipulation of Jay because Jay was so hot headed when he first became right hand man. Like he's telling Dave, Daniel Bryan he's going to fight him. He's he's making matches with Drew McIntyre. He's doing all this stuff to try and like appease Roman. He has this desire to please him, and so he's getting like confusing messages from Roman because Roman's like pride and ego are so messed up, especially after losing a match. And so I think it just makes the inevitable reign of terror, which I'm going to rewrite um, even better. And you gave my boy Drew McIntyre a dub, man. You know, that's, that's never a bad thing either. So yeah, that's, that's what I got. See how you snuck that in there. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was, that was shameless, but I will say I do like it. It reminds me of shout out to house of the dragon, this um, most recent episode actually, but in general, the storyline of like, Damon with the black blackwood blackwater guy but basically being like he went to him he's like hey there's some shit that needs to get done that the queen can't be seen doing i'm not telling you what to do i'm just saying some stuff needs to get done and i feel like that's always an interesting position because then it gives him the fallback of like if he gets caught i told you not to do it which i didn't tell you to do that and then that roman can play jay with jay that way too being like why you keep coming out here? Like as soon as someone checks him for, he'd be like, "Well, I told Jay not to come," and I like how it gives him that that woo. But it's always like a cool. Document, that's I think. like not to stray too far away from the shit, but like that's literally how uh, like corporate crime. That's how it works. Like they don't tell their employees exactly. like, "Hey, cook the books." They're just like, you know, we can't we can't not show growth this quarter. <laughs> we have to have fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. We have to. Yeah. Dr. Bernie made off. Yeah. So. I, I, and I, I, this early stage of the bloodline was just so fun and so interesting for so many different reasons. Like, I, I, I love this arc that leads into Survivor Series. Uh, and back when the KO arc, which we're going to get into next week, was happening, I, I was one of the people saying, yo, KO should win it. And then Roman will, uh, wins it right back. Like, I, I, you know, I, I felt that way. And I get they wanted that record breaking reign. Granted, a cool 10 days without the title, like Roman would have still what, held it for what, 1,439 days if he lost those 10 days? Like he still would have been okay. But um, I, I think, I, I, go ahead. Sorry, I just want to say, well, I just agree with you. Like, I think part of the reason too that made this original part of the bloodline run so interesting is because we still thought he could lose. We were still right. thinking like, oh no, he's going to lose this match or he should drop it now. And like, we weren't at the point where we are towards the end where we were like, he's never going to lose this title ever again. <laughs> Yeah, and, and his challenges only got tougher. He went from Jay Uso to Kevin Owens to Daniel Bryan to Daniel Bryan and Edge to Daniel Bryan again. Cesaro, that's, that's, that's a little dip, but, 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 but then he goes to Edge, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, like on and on. Like his challenges only got tougher over time. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I, I loved this first year of the bloodline and just all of the foundation that is set. And so that's aside from the bias that's kind of what i'm trying to do is like set that table for when we get to that clash at the castle time period and drew can walk into the match way more confident like i've pinned you before and, that crowd and I, would lose their shit if they if they thought he is the last person to pin roman and he lost that match mm -hmm. exactly exactly so and, and, i love and, that 
and it, and it makes the loss even worse for Drew and his his heel turn two years later like it just makes it like I've pinned Roman before I couldn't beat him for the title Solo Sokoa getting involved like all this shit so yeah man yeah this is this is, this is long term booking right here it's, Tony Khan can never do this um but of course let's move into our pre write I'm gonna start here um. I, I want to preface these statements by saying I am not a fan of actually, I actually, I, I kind of do like all these people. So there is a, there's currently a mid card uh, heel stable on raw right now, a trio of, of women who have been affectionately referred to as the stud line. And uh, there's a lot of people who are not enjoying how present they are. And, you know, I, I think the biggest issue for people is the fact that the leader is Sonia Deville, who is easily the worst wrestler within the trio. And I just want to I just want to remind people, like. There have been countless heel stables throughout history where. The leader may not have been the most talented. The leader may have gotten wins that they shouldn't have gotten, like Sonya Deville pinning Lyra Valkyria. Like, yes, that shouldn't happen. But when you're the quote unquote final boss within the group, yeah, Z Zoe Stark is going to take a loss to Zelina Vega. Shayna Baszler is going to lose to whoever. But when it comes to the person who is leading the group, who needs to be seen as this not deserving villain, they're going to get some wins that you may not think that they deserve. And so, you know, I know people have issues with their TV time. Like two weeks ago, they got like three segments on Raw. Sonya getting wins that she doesn't get. But I'm just like, at the end of the day, you kind of need a mid-card heel stable for the women. Like on Raw right now, the women's division, you got Liv, you got Rhea, pretty, you got Damage Control, who's kind of doing whatever right now. Pretty big gap right there. And then you got Lyra, who's rising up the ranks. You ain't got nobody else. And the only heels... Are Liv, who's at the top of the card. Damage control is about to turn face. You ain't really got much else there. So I, while, you know, I completely understand the complaints about the lack of ability, I do think that their presence, uh, the, the one, they're doing something with Shayna Baszler. And I just think the way that she was presented in 2020 as this killer, biting Becky, Becky Lynch on the neck, getting a, um, a WrestleMania title match, how they never really went back to her getting a title shot. She was supposed to face Asuka. That never happened. Um, was tag team fodder for the last few years. Zoe Stark, who's an incredible wrestler, not a good personality. I think that they've done a good job in kind of putting them together and hiding all their weaknesses. Like, Zoe can't talk. Sonya can talk. Sonya can't wrestle. Zoe can wrestle. Shayna Baszler can wrestle pretty well. Maybe not the greatest talker, but Shayna can talk. And so I think they do a good job of uh, of hiding each other's weaknesses and like accentuating each other's strengths. And I just think that ultimately the way I see it, yeah, the, 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 they're going to beat up people like Lyra. They're going to beat up people like Damage Control and the Bottle Girls. But I ultimately see these, these faces coming out on top. And that's what it's all about. And I think that the fact that Sonya is so repulsive for people. I, I get that in this era of WWE, work rate is everything. And most of the people on the roster can work like more so than any era of WWE before. But I think that the fact that she is so not good in the ring, but it makes people react this way. She's accomplishing something and they're accomplishing something by putting her in these positions. And so I'm not too offended by it. Do I like it? Would I like to see something else? Of course. But I do. I do fuck with Sonya, the character. I do fuck with Zoe Stark, the wrestler. And I... I do like Shayna Baszler too. And so I, I, I'm i always going to give them credit for trying something and giving people foils. Because again, that, that that division is pretty barren right now. Like so top heavy. So that's all I got. This is nothing new though. I think also too, just to add to the math of it, it's just funny where, because you're seeing some, not the same thing, but a similar problem with Bianca where it's like, People really want there to be a women's tag division, but then as soon as someone is in a tag or a stable, they get mad. And so it's like, well, how are we going to build this tag division if we can't actually put anyone in a tag team? It's like, yeah, bro, sometimes you get a tag team or a stable, you get evolution where Ric Flair is not really wrestling. 
Sometimes Batista's got to do 90% of the tag match, and it's okay, bro. It's fine. It'll be all right. Like, they got Carlito in Judgment Day. It's cool, bro. We're chilling. I just feel like people are acting, like you said, like this is some new phenomenon where, like, they're trying to get somebody over, and they're just trying some new stuff. Like, do you guys remember the Riot Squad? You guys remember that? It's like and, you gotta try stuff, bro. If you want, if you want Liv Morgan, you gotta have the Riot Squad, bro. You gotta just try stuff, bro. If they are doing this two years from now, the same exact way, I hear you. But it's been like two months. Like it hasn't been that long. It has. Like, it hasn't even been. A, I don't even think it's been two months. It, like no. it's, they just got together. Just got together. Yeah. Yeah. I, in prepping for this episode, I I read about three separate three separate episodes, three separate Lars Sullivan segments. So I don't want to hear shit. Like, so, so, um, but the the last thing I want to say on that, um, I agree with both of y'all, but the last thing I want to say is like, I don't understand why this isn't at the top of everybody's minds when they're thinking about this. Cause this is like, this is all that I was thinking about during the forming of this group. And as we see things start to happen. And when I'm listening to how Sonya says certain things are going to happen. Do y'all not remember? She used to be a GM. Do y'all not remember that? Do y'all think that's not going to come into play in some? But they, there's like this is more to like Armand's point is just like one, it, it's a good thing. Factions, factions are great for covering up for everyone's weaknesses, sort of thing, and boosting everybody's strength. But the other thing is um, with Sonya, she was literally on TV pushing storylines when she wasn't wrestling. So now she's like you know wrestling and pushing the storylines, which means that when she's not wrestling, she can still push the storyline. And the whole point of it, and this is why I bring up the GM thing, is like the whole point of this stable is that it's almost like the YA six or whatever, just like with you know uh, with the stud lines or whatever. It's just like hey, we wasn't getting our just due. Our mom pointed out like I've it's been so long. I've been waiting to see Shayna Baszler like be that kill. Didn't she like kill everybody in elimination chamber and shit? Like, bro, the submission literally everyone swung Liv Morgan and banged her head into the chamber, bro. It was like, incredible. Like it was electric. I'm, and I've watched Zoe Stark wrestle. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no, this makes sense. Like you have people who are like, these people look like they could murder people or whatever with strikes and shit, but they not getting time. They're not getting titles and shit. And here's somebody who's also a wrestler too, but she's been on both sides. She's been the wrestler and she's been the GM coming to say, hey, this is how you work the system. It's like the most plain common sense story. <laughs> I don't know why this is surprising yeah. to anybody. Also, I feel like we're uh, deep enough into WWE lore to understand they're going to try and get the whole MMA thing over. They're never going to give it up. Like, just like, I feel like people act like they're so surprised. It's like, why do they keep wanting to make Shayna, Zoe Stark, and Sonya Deville happen? It's like, they just had an NXT event at the UFC arena, bro. Also, like, also, all, it's like, guys, think about don't... who they're partnered with, dog. Like, that's exactly what I was just about to say. I was like, guys, stop thinking about just inside that wrestling ring. We have movies to put people in. We have, yeah. you know, like there's things we need to do. Like, think about this. Like, there's going to, the next time there's a uh, an action movie with a female lead, you don't think you're going to see a Zoe Stark, a Shania Baszler, a, you know what I mean? Like, think about it, guys. They love yeah. that shit, bro. But especially Triple H. Triple H loves that shit. Yeah. Shout so out to Blade 3. I'm I'm going to conclude because I have to dip out early, but I'm going to say, you know, to wrestling fans in general, it is completely okay to not like something. For me, it's always trying to gain an understanding of it. Even if I don't like the character or I like the in-ring work, if I can understand what's being done, my dislike for it isn't enough for me to just completely dismiss it. Um, you know, like we, granted, the, the RNC, RWC gang, we coined Lipo, let it play out years ago for something a lot more positive, Bianca Belair, who, who everyone should love. But I think it's okay to apply Lipo in these types of situations too. Like, again, at the end of the day, we know Zoe Stark and Shayna can have competent matches. And so if Sonya's the one pulling the strings, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not too offended by it. So that's all I got. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the episode. Cece and Shayna are going to lead you out to the promised land, as they always do. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to head out. Yeah. Hey, be safe. My brother out them streets. Thank you. Yeah. my man. <laughs> so I, my, my one is like, uh, I'm gonna do mine real quick. Cause it's, it's not like a, a real deep thing. Um, I just wanted to talk about, um, the commentary changes that they've made and like where everybody is. I don't think I've ever, I was watching raw the other night 
and SmackDown. And I, I didn't realize how many times during pre like previous years when I was watching wrestling, I would like react to commentary in a sense where it's just like, why did they say that? Or, oh, you could have said something cooler, blah, blah, blah. I literally like didn't pay attention. Like it felt like commentary wasn't really there. Like they were a part of the show, very fluid, not interrupting anything, not saying anything weird or whatever, except for, you know, Pat every once in a while or whatever, or a lot of the while, should I say. But when you got, um, when Corey and Wade, you know, are doing, even um, on NXT, um, with Vic and Book or whatever, like I'm listening and I'm like, this is the audio that I exactly want paired with the things that are going on. They're punching in at the right times. And the biggest thing that I noticed or whatever is that when they're promoing things, whether it be a match, somebody debuting, or even some motherfucking brand shit that they got a sponsor for or whatever, it don't feel weird. Like, it doesn't feel weird. It feels so fluid. So I just want to say big shout out to the commentary team, especially my man Corey Graves or whatever out here uh going crazy or whatever especially i just love to see that like especially when i just looked at Corey and wayne and i was like here go two guys who you know if and if i was in their situation i could have got you know really sad and depressed about not having my career anymore but they so lit right now you damn near forget that they was wrestling at some point or whatever so i just think that's real fire and i just want to say shout out to them boys no i think i think that's very true i think part of that because i never really thought of it but i definitely agree with what you're saying i think part of that is due to like I think Booker T is probably the last person who still kind of acts like a commentator from when we were a kid is that I think people our age, especially are kind of attuned to a certain type of commentary, which is like the J.R. King, where it's like a lot of bombast, a lot of yelling. But I think that commentary fit the kind of matches they were having where it was more chaotic and there was more like big spots and dramatic things. Whereas I think now wrestling is much tighter and quicker and like just more about pace. And obviously there's big dramatic spots, but like it's just much more fluid. And I think commentary now reflects that to your point. I think it's much more like Geek said, I'm going to be a part of the show and I'm going to kind of flow in and out. Whereas I think when we were kids, commentary was like something added to the show. It was like there was a show that That's you exactly might right. hear. JR screaming over something and like that was cool when he's like yelling like oh my god like because that like is how it feels to see Stone Cold hit the ring but like yelling like oh my god da, 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 during like a fucking Daniel Bryan match would be like okay bro chill the fuck out like like it's just like wrestling is a bit different now like we don't they don't like yes that happens but like we also have just a lot of different styles where like yeah you need the commentary to kind of ebb and flow and kind of fit the moment more so than like to be its own moment like there's some yeah. wrestling moments where it's like all i remember is jr's commentary i don't even Bro. remember what happened i just remember him yelling about it and that served his purpose but i just don't think that serves today's purpose like facts yep no yeah like that's 100 percent right it's not only that it's also like it's personality too and finding the right people with the right personality like JR had was his his uh you know on screen role was to be like sort of like the righteous commentator whereas like Jerry was to, like to be the super like out of here uh with stuff or whatever or uh yeah the king and um when I look at Corey when I look at Wade it feels like they're just really talking as them but when I'm yeah. listening back on I'm, I'm like oh no you are in character as a commentator yeah. like that being able to like make me think that you're really just talking or whatever and, and it's a part of the show but you're also putting something on fucking dope bro like no. and that, that's the last thing i'll say too is like them not having a script anymore and this actually being themselves they pick the right personalities these guys are great at this shit like they're all good at this shit yeah it's like no nah, I'll, I'll go to my next but it's just like yeah because if you really think about it if you actually thought how jerry the king lawler act on commentary was how he acted in real life he'd be like oh he's a pervert like he can't be around people. This is so much a character. Like, yeah, the puppies thing is only funny because it's like so spam is so dramatic. We're like, yeah, he doesn't actually he I hope he doesn't actually act like this. Where yeah, you're listening to now, even like Michael Cole now versus Michael Cole in like 2006, it's much more like, yeah, I bet he probably thinks that. That's much closer to what he probably is. Whereas like before, when we were kids, you would watch jerry the king lawler or whoever was the heel commentator would just support the heel and he would just make up the most crazy fucking reason it would just be like yeah you know what sometimes you do have to beat up women he'd be like 
what? <laughs> 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 like, uh, bro, you don't have to support him. So That's perfect. <laughs> no, yeah, because I just heard Wade say something like that. It was like last week. It was like, yeah, well, it's not pretty, but when you're trying to get the win, you got to do whatever you exactly. can. And I was yeah. like, yeah, no, that does make sense. Yeah, that, that, that does make sense. <laughs> yeah, but it's different when it's like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna support Kane trying to crucify him. It's like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, sure. you want you want Matt Hardy to die? Like, <laughs> it was oh, just, shit. but that's what was going on. Like, he was trying to kill Matt Hardy. Like, there was much more storylines where death was a big part of it when we were kids. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I just want to. I do want to get a little serious because there is there's been rumors, speculation about about Bobby Lashley leaving us once again for the WWE. I just wanted to give him his flowers. You know, I wanted to read some of his accolades. One-time ECW champion, two-time WWE champion, three-time U.S. champion, two-time IC champion. Him and RVD are the only two people to hold the TNA championship, ECW championship, and WWE championship. That's crazy. Yeah, him and RVD. That's it. The two most random niggas, too, like, to to do it. Like, you never... And it's crazy because it's like... I. Part of it is just pure timing. It's like they were wrestling when ECW was around. But it is kind of funny that, like, yeah, like, Kurt Angle was in TNA and never did that. <laughs> like, never. Like, he never got the ECW title for some reason. But uh, I, and I'm, like, I'm not, you know, I do like Bobby Lashley, but I'm realistic about Bobby Lashley. We wanted him to be Black, Black Brock Lesnar. It never happened. You know, he got, he got, he had his moments. I love the Hurt Lock. The Hurt Business was fine. Like, it was had its moments, but we, it's okay that it's not coming back. But I just think that, like, Bobby Lashley, and I was listening to the show talk about this, too. Like, Bobby Lashley was just, he did a great job for what he was tasked with doing, especially in his last run. Hats off to Bobby Lashley. Whatever he does next, I'll support him. You know, shout out to bald niggas. And I just think that, like, there are people who are trying to like, make it seem like Bobby Lashley is nothing, and I'm like, you're really dragging it. Like, they didn't. Bobby Lashley won a lot of titles. Like Bobby Lashley is like is not nothing. But yeah, we can all be adults and admit that like there was a vision for Bobby Lashley that never fully clicked over. And like part of that was writing, part of that was him. But like I just think, you know, Bobby Lashley is one of those guys where when he does come back, because he's coming back, let's be for real, it'll be a cool return at Royal Rumble when, you know, they hit Bobby Lashley music. So shout out to Franklin Roberto Lashley. Yeah. Roberto. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you on that. And it's like two things that you just said. The one, like there was a vision for him and it was never realized. I felt that the whole time, like every time I was watching him, I was like, is it, are we going to get there? Are we going to get there? But like, my thing is like, who the fuck can you have that feeling of, is he going to get there for like 15 years? And right. Like, still anticipate it. Cause like, there's not a lot of people. And then the other thing about it is too, is just like, who the fuck is that popping who can't talk for that long? Like, Bro. name somebody else who can't, because Brock can kind of talk or whatever, even though he wasn't talking for himself when he Especially did start now, talking for yeah. himself. He can talk, yeah. But it's like, he he really, even when Bobby got better at talking, he still wasn't great or whatever. And he had to talk for himself a lot or just be like, I want to fight you or blah, blah, blah. But like, you see anybody else or whatever doing that shit, it might take you out of it. It never took you out of it with, with Bobby. And like, to your point, yet like, if you can do that, you did a great bro. He he's Bobby Lashley has had like his positioning and like what what he was and what he still I feel like can be is like so crazy um, that like as I thought he was on his like, all right, I'm going on my my farewell tour kind of run. You know, I'm still thinking like, oh, shit, might be some shit, you know, could be some, you know, blah, blah. blah. So that's just I don't know, man. I feel like I don't there's a lot of people I don't feel like that with. Like for me, I've kind of like, I'm not waiting to see what else Braun Strowman does. You know what I mean? I'm like, Omas got like one or two more chances with me. You know what I mean? But like, (laughs) you know, there's a lot of people who have come through and like been in that spot. But with Bobby Lashley, I might be like, I didn't ask for Bobby Lashley, like a segment match, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not about to like turn this bitch off because Bobby Lashley wrestling. No, nigga, like he about to throw somebody through the, the, the fuck. Like, no, nah. no, that is so funny. Because, yeah, we talk about Bobby Lashley like he just got just because of NXT call up still. Like we're like, no, but if like he get back with MVP, like they can do it. It's like, bro, Bobby Lashley is 40. Like it's, it's, if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now, bro. But yeah, like that's how impressive and like physical he is. So, yeah, we still just think that like 
one day Bobby will put it together, bro. And yeah, he's that like physically imposing that just looking yeah. at him wrestle is that like, he's like one of the last few Vince guys where it's just like, no, he just looks so big and scary. And yeah. Like that's all it really takes, bro. Yeah. This and, yeah, nigga bumping bump to you in the club. What the fuck you about to do? Bro, when he put that hurt lock on people, I was like, yeah, you're fucked. When he did it to Miz to like win the championship, I was like, I think that nigga like that's he's not working right now. Dog. Yeah, he knocked him out. Like I think he hurt Miz that day. Yeah, and like just yeah, I just think Bobby Lashley is just like he's one of those wrestlers that I always just have fond feelings towards. Not that like he was some, you know, like I said amazing person, but I always like hey, like you said, like who who doesn't like Bobby Lashley? Who's like oh fuck Bobby Lashley? Like girl, get over yourself. Bro. Like you might not love Bobby Lashley, but it's like. It's like someone being like, I hate the big show. It's like, all right, yeah. like I guess. Like, yeah, you know what? Who hates that's the a, big show? Like that's a good way to think about it. And we're gonna we're gonna close out our, our regular uh our regular part of the episode on that note. If you don't fuck with Bobby Lashley, you're a weird person. If you don't yeah. fuck with the A show, you're a weird person. And that's why you should go to patreon.com slash the A show RNC. Follow us on all socials at the A Show RNC, all one word together. Um for Chan Armand. Um, on the regular for CC. Um, if you're a regular listener, if you're not on the Patreon, we're going to end it here. here, here.